Hey my friends, it's your old pal Jordan the Lion. How are you all doing today? I hope you said well. I'm doing great. Jaws doing great. Today we're going to do a filming location vlog. This is a movie that originally when it came out I was probably seven, eight years old and I didn't like the movie or it just didn't really do anything for me. And then about a year ago during COVID I went back and rewatched it and I enjoyed it a lot. And I wanted to come do some of these locations, but the main one I wanted to see was closed for COVID. So it's open again. Um, unfortunately, we can't see all the locations today because we just don't have time. In order to get to the main one we want to and catch it while it's open, it closes at four, we're gonna have to pick our favorites. So I'm gonna take you to my favorite filming locations from the Jessica Tandy, Cicely Tyson, Mary Stuart Masterson, Kathy Bates movie, Fried green tomatoes. You might have noticed I'm wearing a different pair of sunglasses today. That's because we're doing this Patreon sunglass vlog for Rose Broderick. Rose, I hope you enjoy this vlog and I hope you like the movie. Now let's go. Days with Jordan the Lion begins now. The world's greatest sidekick and co-host is here. He's already napping though. Almost every single time I vlog Georgia, it rains. So most of the movie is supposed to take place near Whistle Stop, Alabama, but it actually is filmed almost all here in Georgia. And uh, we're here at the house of the Threadgoods. So the colors changed originally in the movie. The house was white. We first see this on the, uh, the wedding day of the eldest Threadgood daughter. We see Buddy, Buddy Threadgood, come running up the side of this right here because there are the train tracks. He was down messing around on the train tracks. So they originally, during the movie, they had like kind of some steps that he could make his way down this side and back up this side. There's the infamous bridge. So, like I said, the, uh, the day of the wedding, there used to be a big tree right here. You can actually see the tree stump right here. And that was the tree that had the ladder going up and the tree house platform up there. So this day, Buddy, is, this is the day that he meets Ruth. And Buddy and Ruth basically fall in love here. But there's little Iggy, and she's upset, and she's up hiding up in the tree that used to be right here. And so Buddy is up there talking to her, trying to coax her out of the tree house. Now the bridge behind us, that plays an important part in the movie as well because they've definitely changed the, the uh, style of the rail that goes across and now you can't drive over it. But in the movie, we would have seen a shot where the shot was kind of like this. Iggy is over here and you can see Buddy and Ruth standing right here and they actually do a turnaround. They give you a little bit of a shot where when it was the old rail there, you can see from Iggy's perspective Buddy and Ruth over there with the umbrella over him because they're kissing. And that's when the hat blows over the top of this. And Buddy decides to go around this way. You can see Iggy standing right there and he walks down that hill towards the train tracks. So that's the scene where you can see him kind of playing Charlie Chaplin with them. This would have been, this part of the movie would have been in the 20s. Later on in the movie, we're in the 30s. But during this part, he would have been walking up the train tracks to try and get her hat. So Buddy ends up walking down this path all the way down to those train tracks. So normally I would not come walking down train tracks, but I read that this hasn't been used in quite some time and you can tell by the tracks that they're pretty ragged. 
So Buddy would have been walking along these tracks, kicking the hat and reaching out, trying to grab the hat. And then right over here, he would have got his foot stuck. And he looks up and he sees the train and here's the train coming. Starts trying to unlace his boots, but they're really high laced. And he keeps turning around, looking at the girls up on the bridge, letting them know he's okay, waving to them, but he's not okay. And they're watching the train come. So from up here where Ruth and Iggy are, you can see where that bend in the train tracks is. The train starts coming towards Buddy right there. As the train's coming towards us, you finally see Buddy get his lace to where he can pull his foot out. And just as he pulls his foot out, we see the train come right and right towards us and hits him. Ruth and Iggy would have been screaming from right up here. And everyone would have come running down the side of this hill from the house, which is right directly across. And after Buddy's hit, we hear Ruth and Iggy start screaming and we see Big George and everyone come running towards us from the house. And of course we see all the people running down here when it was a little bit safer to go and help. Now we also see this house when Iggy's mother summons her to come back and Iggy's telling the story and we see her walking down this street right here. She's walking towards us and that's the day that she meets Frank Bennett for the first time who ends up becoming Ruth's husband. He's parked right here with his pickup truck and tries to introduce himself, asks her name, and she says Tawanda. So right there under the bridge, you can see there's a no trespassing sign and they've actually put some barricades so that there's no concern of a train going through there. But it's right past there. That's where Buddy Jr. has his accident with the train. And Big George comes running down there and picks him up and runs him up that hill right over there to the car. And we think that Buddy Jr. has recreated or basically lived the same fate as his namesake. Now this house is also important because once Ruth is diagnosed with cancer, they bring her here and she lives here the last weeks of her life on the ground floor in here and ends up passing away in there as well. Their water tower says, I love you. Our next location is about 25 minutes away. Even though the rain stopped and I was gonna take him out with me, didn't think it was too safe down there on those railroad tracks, so. Somehow it's crazy. Every time I go vlogging, if it's raining while I'm driving there, it stops usually while I'm while I'm vlogging and then starts back up again after. Now we've entered the town of Zebulon, Georgia. So here we have the courthouse. In the movie, they mention or Iggy mentions that they had had many days of rain in Whistle Stop and that it flooded the river and someone found Frank Bennett's truck. So they pull the truck out and of course, even though they don't have a body, the sheriff of Whistle Stop, Grady comes and tells her that she and Big George are gonna be tried for this. And so here they are in here being questioned and uh, she's kind of making light of it. And then they call up the Reverend for the town, Reverend Scroggins, and uh, they ask him if she was, if Iggy was at home the night in question, and he says no, she wasn't because he kept exquisite records in his book of everything that goes on. And the dates in question, he attested 
under oath that Iggy and Big George were at the three day and three night revival, Baptist revival. And he says George was in charge of the barbecue as he is for every year. And the, uh, the prosecutor says, well, maybe they could have committed the murder uh, within the next couple days. And that's when Reverend Scroggin says, if you've never been to our church, then you don't know that we do three days and three nights. And so the judge ends up calling everyone up to the bench and says that they think that Frank got drunk, drove his truck into the river and was eaten by whatever lives in the water. <laughs> and, uh, and basically George and Iggy are free. And this is a pretty funny scene because throughout the whole movie, Iggy has been anti-church and basically mocks everything that the Reverend does. And so he go, she goes, Iggy goes up to Ruth afterward and said, how did you get Reverend Scroggins to lie under oath? And she said, well, if good thing the judge didn't look because that was actually a copy of Moby Dick that he swore his hand on and not the Bible. And that Ruth said, I assured him and promised him that if he did this, that you would start attending church and said, I never, never don't make good on my promises. So we know Iggy now ha is indebted to her and has to go to church. Now we're heading off to what in the movie is Whistle Stop, Whistle Stop Alabama. And the Whistle Stop Cafe from the movie. I just passed through course at the town that seven little Johnstons live in and that reminded me as we're heading out to the Whistle Stop Cafe that's where Trent and Amber Johnston had their first date and, uh, and I think it was like their 19th wedding anniversary on the show they came back and ate there again and mentioned that that was the filming location from Fried Green Tomatoes so we're pretty close with not too much time to spare by the time we get there, they'll be open for another 20 minutes. There's our town, Juliet. And even though it's a little covered up in the blue down there, it says home of the movie set for fried green tomatoes. Oh boy, we are so close. This is gonna be great. Here we are. Wow, I can't believe that we are here. The train that they mentioned when Kathy Bates and her husband, when Ed and Evelyn are here, their car is parked right here towards the beginning of the movie and Ed's using the payphone over here and Evelyn thinks that she hears the train and there's no train, they say a train hasn't been through here in years, but as she meets Ninny Threadgood at the retirement home, Ninny tells her the story of Ruth and Iggy starting the Whistle Stop Cafe. And this, at the time, this is so cool to see, would have been the grocery store. And then here is the Whistle Stop. Now I was wrong, I thought that I was gonna get to eat here, but it looks like it still hasn't reopened. But wow, looks like the tower that used to be right over here is gone. You remember we see that when Big George is chopping wood, and he's singing in front of it. Wow, so cool to see this place. So much happens right here in the movie, of course, I guess maybe through the windows I can show you some of the filming locations that way. Definitely a different sign 
all the old soda signs that would have been up for all the drinks and everything that that's all been taken down but in the movie this is where Ruth is teaching the kids like school they're all lined up right here that's the time that they hear this scream and that's Buddy's when Buddy loses his arm and then of course the famous fried green tomato sign over here looks like they have not kept the bullet hole version from the movie of course that happens when Grady and Iggy are playing cards right at this table right in here I could probably show you that they would have been playing at a table kind of in between the counter and the table that's right in front of us and they hear a bunch of commotion and out the window you can see the the Klansmen and they shoot that hole through the window right here and Iggy and Grady come running out and they've got Big George tied up out here and they're whipping him now take a look at this so since the tower would have originally been right here we have that scene where Smokey is sitting at the lunch counter right through this window and he's shaking because he hasn't had a drink and we see Iggy and Smokey come walk out the back over here and they come walking towards us he apologizes for spilling his food and right about here is where she pulls out the bottle of liquor and gives it to him and then starts telling him the story of the old lake as they sit right here there would have been like two big wood pieces that they were sitting on she's telling him that story about how the ducks came one day and sat in the lake and the lake froze and they got up and flew away and took the lake with them but also check this out this is the smoker that we see Big George smoking the meat on and the tables for all the african-american workers would have been back here because they you know of course they have that scene inside where grady is telling the girls they shouldn't be uh some people aren't happy that they're feeding black people along with white people here and this is where big george while he's making that barbecue we find out later that that barbecue that he was making right on that rack was actually frank bennett and speaking of Frank Bennett, here lies Frank Bennett of Valdosta. The secret was in the sauce. That's what they say when everybody comments on how good the barbecue is. Sipsy says the secret's in the sauce. Now look back here. If you go back here, they have Smoky Lonesome Shack. Remember Smokey? They give him a place to stay. And when Frank comes and tries to take the baby, he comes out and says, I don't think you should be taking Miss Ruth's baby. We find out at the end of the movie that Smokey was actually in love with Ruth and that when he died, that was the only possession he had was her photo. Oh, that's cool. Juliet Opryland. And they've got a hee-haw backdrop. I love it because I love hee-haw. <laughs> that is awesome. So check it out right here. Where that house is this is where the chimney would have been at the end of the movie when 
Jessica Tandy Ninny Threadgood is sitting out on the street on her luggage. And because they filmed the scene at night, it was kind of hard to figure out exactly where Frank Bennett pulls his truck up. But I feel like it was right out here because you see him come through a dirt road that was right here in the movie because you can see that. But the reason I think it was there is because he ends up going in the back way into the restaurant when he attacks Sipsy to take the baby. We see him come out here and then she ends up coming out afterward, which makes me think that he would have been parked right back here. So let me show you a couple other things. When they finally find Frank's truck after all those years because of the flooding, Grady comes in and tells EJ he needs to talk to her. And they come out here and they walk across the street over to here. And they end up standing right over here. And that's when Grady's saying, you know, they're gonna arrest you tomorrow. I'm gonna have to arrest you, so you should get out of town. And I think they'd be happy if we gave him Big George, and that's when she's saying, I'm not giving up Big George. I'm not gonna let him take the rap. He says, Iggy, that was the death of a white man. This is serious. You can see the yellow building right here, and you can see all these posts behind them. So at the end of the movie, when Evelyn thinks that Mrs. Threadgood has died and then realizes that it was actually Mrs. Otis, she comes here looking for Mrs. Threadgood, knowing that she'll be going back to her house, but knows that the house is no longer here. So Evelyn parks right here, and you see Mrs. Threadgood sitting on her luggage right out here. Now this is what's interesting, is that where she would have been sitting, they've actually, at the time of the filming, that was an empty spot with the chimney was all that was left. But what it looks like happened, this is so cool to be here, I love it. But what it looks like they did was it looks like they moved the Whistle Stop Depot that was originally directly across the tracks beside that building to the left of it. It would have been right here. They actually moved it into the spot where Jessica Tandy would have been sitting right out here. And this is a great scene because this is the one where you can even see that bank in the background. It was a lot more run down at the time of filming than it is now. But that was here. The Opry house right over here was here. And it's actually while she's here that she says, did I ever tell you what happened to Frank Bennett's body? So that's when Ninny tells the story that it was actually when Frank was taking the baby that Smokey stepped in, took a couple of punches, and then Sipsy came out and hit him in the head. And as she said, that pan was used for more than frying chicken that night and ended up killing him. And so they decide to dump his car into the river and to make barbecue out of him. Secrets in the sauce. Now it looks like they do have this over here. This is not the one exactly from the movie. After we think that Buddy Jr. has died, we find out, nope, he actually lost his arm. So here lies Buddy's arm. So long, old pal. <laughs> That's when Sipsy, played by Cicely Tyson, says, why are we calling him Stump? She says, well, Iggy says, we might as well be the first ones. So Jessica Tandy and Kathy Bates would have had that conversation right here. And you can see all of this behind them. You can even see that Omega flower. You can see that in the movie as well. That and the bank sign both. Looks like pretty much nothing in town is open and we're here at 3.30 so kind of surprised by that but this shop and apparently this one as well, both have fried green tomatoes souvenirs that you can buy. Sounds like somebody just got shot.
Now with it being closed, I won't be able to show you exactly what I want to show you through the windows, but I'll do my best. So if you look straight ahead, you see that window that leads to the kitchen. That window is where Cicely Tyson pops her head out and she's saying, I don't know why people don't want to eat with a little black boy when they'll eat an egg that comes out of a chicken's ass. <laughs> and back in the kitchen through those doors is where they first make the fried green tomatoes. And AG tries to have Ruth try it and she doesn't like it. And they start basically having a food fight, throwing flour and pudding and all kinds of things all over each other back there. Then of course, when the sheriff from Valdosta is here trying to look for clues, he's always here eating and we get a good shot of the entire diner whenever he's here. But then if you look over here where this window is, this second window, let me see if I can... If you look over here where this window, the first window closest to us, that's the booth where we see the sheriff eating and asking Iggy questions and saying he knows that she had something to do with it. But that's also where a very young Mrs. Otis is sitting as a little girl when Frank comes charging in here with the gun to get his baby back and he hits Cicely Tyson across the face with a gun right there in front of the counter and then takes the baby and walks out. Definitely want to come back and eat here at some point. I thought I was going to get to today, but no dice. I totally think more movies should do stuff like this. This is such a little small town, a little strip. I love that they have kept it something related to the movie, even though the movie was made back in 1991. They still keep it feeling like the movie set. This is such a good movie. It's funny, it's sad, it's dramatic. It's got a little bit of everything. Now we're gonna head out to the church that also has the cemetery in it from the movie. It looks like the cemetery is not far at all from the Whistle Stop Cafe. It's only, looks like about a two minute drive. Even though it's the first Baptist church in the movie, it's the United Methodist Church here in town. So here we have the church. We see this when, actually we see the inside of it when the Thread Goods' oldest daughter is getting married at the beginning of the movie. And then we see inside of it during one of the sermons when Itchy comes riding by outside on a truck with some other people and is yelling and screaming at the people inside of there. But we also see it whenever there's a funeral. When Buddy Threadgood dies, we see this behind everyone's back and we also see it when Ruth dies. And then right out here is the cemetery from the movie. Let me show you what they've done. But you see right here, buried beside each other, Buddy Threadgood, 1902 to 1920. So that's when our movie would have started basically, it was 1920. And of course, people are out here leaving honey because that's what Iggy does. She goes out and finds beehives and wrangles the honey away. And there's Ruth Jamison, 1903 to 1939. Also, some honey for her. I think that's a really cool touch for the town to do. As Evelyn and Ninny are out here Coming to visit the grave, you can see that over their shoulder, in front of the church and the windows. And then as they make their way down here, you can see even these bricks over their shoulder in the background as well. Now let's see if we can find where the headstones were in the movie. I think they were over here. So this is the best I can come up with. The only reason I'm confused is because the headstones, they must have been fake headstones because they were all facing towards us in the movie, 
But that's the only tree that looks like what it should. That's the only fence out here like that. And that's definitely, you can see Jessica Tandy standing over here and you can see that gated fence area back there. So I think the headstones would have originally been right here when Kathy Bates picks up the note and sees that there's a note for Ruth there. What a difference two days makes, huh? Surprise. So it's two days later and I came back and they're actually open, so take a look inside. Food is amazing. And the fried green tomatoes were amazing. <laughs> As is the barbecue. Secrets in the sauce. I couldn't believe it. I was sitting at the counter, turned around and looked at it and I said, is that the real window? And they said, yep, that's the one. Holy cow, huh? There's an autograph poster. Look, you can uh, get your photo right underneath it if you want. Looks like it's the director, John Avid. Well, my friends, we're gonna call it a day. I hope you enjoyed this vlog today. Took us through quite a bit of Georgia and I enjoyed everything I saw, I hope you did too. If you've never seen the movie, definitely worth it. It's, like I said, it's got some drama, it's got some action, it's funny, it's sad. Just a great movie. Thank you all for watching. Have a great night, and always remember, the secret was in the sauce. Goodbye. Thank <laughs> you.